Welcome back. If you'd like to suggest a story for Airborne, Aero TV, our website or podcast, drop us an email to news-spy at aero-news.net. After announcing a program to promote the Skycatcher around the country this summer in March, Cessna recently invited its group of nine pilots and one dispatcher interns to Kansas to get them ready for their summer-long barnstorming tour. The pilots, each a CFI, with at least 250 hours and at least a junior in college, will be attending aviation functions around the country, ranging from pancake fly-ins to open houses and, of course, Oshkosh, to sing the praises of the Skycatcher and encourage people, young and old, to learn to fly. Throughout the month of July, they'll be showing off the airplanes at fly-ins, air shows, FBOs, and Cessna Pilot Centers before making the pilgrimage to Wisconsin. Not a bad summer intern gig. After an unsuccessful attempt to Warzazat last week, Solar Impulse completed its flight to Morocco's southern region last Friday. Tom Patton reports. The Solar Impulse landed successfully just after midnight on Friday, June 22nd. The team said it was the most challenging flight undertaken at any time in the program due to the arid desert climate known for its high winds and turbulence. The Solar Impulse airplane took off just after 7 p.m. Thursday morning from Rabat Saleh Airport. After flying towards Casablanca, the HBS-1A made its way inland towards Marrakesh, avoiding the Atlas Mountains, and took up a course toward the desert. After a flight lasting a total of 17 hours, 20 minutes, and 369 nautical miles, Andre Borschberg landed the solar-powered aircraft safely at Warzazat International Airport in the Kingdom of Morocco. This was the team's second attempt to complete the flight in a region known for its thunderstorms, strong winds, and thermal currents, any of which they said could be fatal for the fragile aircraft. The team credited the sophisticated modeling programs of the Solar Impulse Mission Control Center, support from Warzazat's meteorologists, and Andre's piloting skills for a smooth flight. Warzazat, which comes from a Berber word meaning without noise, will be the site of a solar thermal power plant for the Kingdom of Morocco. The Solar Impulse airplane was invited by the King of Morocco to be part of the celebration announcing its construction. For Airborne, I'm Tom Patton. Eurocopter has turned science fiction into science fact and begun the U.S. tour of its X-cubed high-speed hybrid helicopter. The tour got underway recently with a debut X-cubed flight presentation at the Grand Prairie, Texas headquarters of Eurocopter's U.S. subsidiary, American Eurocopter. The flight was observed by employees, elected officials, customers, and industry partners. Eurocopter's aircraft configuration for the X-Cubed uses a pair of turboshaft engines to power a five-blade main rotor system along the two propellers installed on short-span fixed wings. In flight testing, the aircraft easily surpassed its initial speed target of 220 knots, reaching more than 230 knots in level flight while using 80% of available power. The company envisions a wide range of purposes for its hybrid technology and future products, including long-distance search and rescue, Coast Guard and Border Patrol missions, passenger transport and offshore airlift, along with inner-city shuttle services. Eurocopter says it is also well-suited for military missions. It could have been a lot worse than it turned out, but the NTSB has released its probable cause report for an accident which occurred at Whitman Regional Airport during Air Venture in 2010. The accident injured pilot and racing team owner Jack Rouse, as well as a passenger in his plane, but thankfully no one on the ground. Still, Rouse lost his left eye in the accident. The NTSB cites Roush's actions as pilot in command as the probable cause of the accident, and Roush appears to have accepted that judgment. 
Roush said at that time he was trying to avoid hitting a Piper Cub, which had been cleared for takeoff as he was in the pattern to land. He initiated a go around, increasing engine power slightly, but not to take off power, as he looked for additional traffic to avoid. He estimated that he advanced the throttle levers, quote, probably a third of the way to stop, and as he looked for traffic, the stall warning stick shaker and stick pusher systems activated almost simultaneously as the right wing stalled. The airplane subsequently collided with terrain in a nose down right wing low attitude. In the official vernacular, the NTSB said the probable cause of the accident was, quote, the pilot's decision to not advance the engines to take off power during the go around as stipulated by the airplane flight manual, which resulted in an aerodynamic stall at a low altitude. In just a moment, if you liked what Aero TV has done at Oshkosh in the past, editor in chief Jim Campbell says you ain't seen nothing yet. I'm Ashley Hale, and you're airborne on Aero TV. Avidyne is the brand of choice for pilots who want innovative, easy to use avionics. And the new IFD 540 GPS Navcom sets a new standard for simplicity in communication and LPV navigation. As a slide in replacement for existing 530 series navigators, and with a highly intuitive touchscreen control, the IFD 540 makes it much easier to access the information you want when you want it, reducing head downtime and making flying more enjoyable. Finally, you have a choice, and the choice is easy. Avidyne. Thanks for joining us. It's time for this week's barnstorming commentary. In another month, all aviation eyes will be on Wisconsin, as the EAA's annual convention and fly-in gets underway. ANN and Aero TV always bring you outstanding coverage of the event, but Jim Campbell says the best is yet to come. Thanks, Ashley. Hi, folks. Well, I'm going to divert a little bit from my usual rantings and ravings and all the political discourse to put a pitch in to get your attention and your support for the most aggressive effort we undertake all year. Yep, we're talking Oshkosh, and this year Oshkosh is going to be a hoot. While there's going to be a phenomenal amount of news being made, a lot of new products and new airplanes, a lot of excitement about the personnel and the products and everything that are going to be taking place there, this year is going to be a particularly political year at Oshkosh. Uh, Rod Hightower has now got a year in grade. Some of the things he's doing are popular. Some things he's doing are very unpopular. And in no uncertain terms, a lot of people are there to tell him a little bit of both. I think it's going to be an extraordinary year to cover Oshkosh from the standpoint of the first complete year of EAA under new leadership and trying to determine where EAA goes from here. Above and beyond all that, we're bringing in a crack crew of people, all the usual uh, folks that uh, make up a and plus several dozen more who help us in a number of different venues. There will be dozens of stories every day, lots of audio, and there will be lots of video. Aero TV will be producing uh, quite a few archival presentations from the show, plus Monday through Friday, July 23rd to July 27th at 8 p.m. Central Time, you'll be able to see the best of Oshkosh each day, airborne daily from Oshkosh. We'll be doing about a half hour presentation with Ashley giving you the top of the news as well as some amazing folks in interviews as well as guest hosts like Phil Boyer and Hal Shevers, Chelsea Welch. And we've got a lot in store. We're really proud of what we're doing. We hope you'll join us. Aero-news.net, aero-tv.net, our YouTube channel, our Vimeo channels. There's a lot coming up. Uh, whatever you're doing, if you can't make Oshkosh, Check in on Aero News. I don't think anybody covers it as comprehensively and with much heart and soul as Aero News does. Join us July 23rd and on for the most amazing event on and over Earth, Oshkosh 2012. We hope to see you there. After 37 years in the aviation industry, James F. Allball has announced he will retire from his post as President and CEO, Boeing Commercial Airplanes, October 1st at the age of 62. Boeing Chairman President and CEO Jim McNerney said Tuesday that his replacement will be Raymond L. Connor. Connor, 57, a 34-year company veteran who began his career as an airplane mechanic, moves to the leadership post from Senior Vice President, Sales and Customer Support for Commercial Airplanes. 
Abbott joined Boeing in 1975 in what was then Rockwell Corporation's defense and space business, which Boeing acquired in 1996. During his career, he served as president of Rocketdyne Propulsion and Power, president and CEO of Boeing Space and Communications, and president and CEO of Boeing Integrated Defense Systems. He will continue to report to McNerney while assisting with the transition to Connor. American airline executives say they are willing to drop a pilot furlough plan in an effort to work out a deal with its pilots union while it restructures under Chapter 11 bankruptcy laws. The airline is also reportedly offering a slight pay increase to pilots. The disclosure of its apparent willingness to make a deal came shortly after a judge delayed for a week a ruling on the airline's request to throw out its labor contracts. The pilots' union now has more time to consider the final offer from American. But the Associated Press reports that analysts say it could also help the airline stave off a takeover bid from another airline. Meanwhile, Air France last week presented the airline's finalized strategic business plan to the Central Works Council and the company's management. Under the new framework, which is still being worked out, the change will result in a staff decline of 5,122. Most of those jobs are expected to come from attrition as jobs left vacant by retirees go unfilled over the next two years. Each week, we share with you a sample of an online video one of our viewers found especially entertaining. We call it AVW, the Aero Video of the Week. In this week's 30-second video, airshow performer Skip Stewart flies over the back of a moving pickup truck to pick up a ribbon being held by one of the ground crew. To find this video, go to YouTube and search for Skip Stewart Pickup Truck. If you have a suggestion for a future Aero Video of the Week, you can send us a link to news-spy at aero-news.net. Finally this week, on a checkout flight with a newly licensed pilot, flight instructor Rick Eason, a faculty advisor for the University Flying Club in Orono, Maine, was forced to make an emergency landing after there was a loud bang under the cowling of the club-owned Cessna 172 and the plane started shaking. The landing at Bangor International Airport was successful, but Eason was contacted by the control tower, which asked if something had been lost from the plane. The Bangor Daily News reports that yes, something did come off the airplane. A wrist pin, which connects the piston head to the arm inside the cylinder, separated and fell out of the airplane. The four-inch metal rod was reportedly still hot when it was discovered by a homeowner who had a newly minted hole in the roof and front room ceiling where the part came through. No one in the home was hurt, but authorities estimate that the part caused about $5,000 in damages to the house. Well, we promise not to drop any airplane parts through your roof as long as you keep watching Airborne. But in the meantime, get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories at aero-news.net. Please join us again next week for a new edition of Airborne here on Aero TV. But keep an eye out a little earlier in the week because Airborne has a surprise for you. Actually, two of them. I'm Ashley Hale. Thanks for watching. See you next week.